once again. Welcome to another video on inclusive education with me, Dr. Sunanda Roy. An essential factor for an inclusive school is a barrier-free environment. Hence, infrastructural facilities need to be provided to students as per their needs. An inclusive school aims to cater to the diverse needs of these differently abled students or students with disabilities. Hence, the infrastructure should be designed in such a way so that the physical and cognitive barriers are removed. Let's take a look at the infrastructure which is required to remove physical barriers in the path of students with disabilities in getting good quality of education. An inclusive school is fully accessible to all children, including children who are physically impaired or challenged. For example, corridors, rooms, toilets, etc. are wide enough for children who are confined to wheelchairs. The school doors have handles fixed at appropriate level and not too high, especially reachable for those who are below average height. The school toilets have adequate doors, taking care of the privacy, especially for children and girls who need help in toileting. The toilets should have railing or bars which can be held onto while using the toilet. The classroom settings in the school enable children to move freely or sit with a friend when required. The furniture should not be fixed and can be moved for easy mobility of students who are visually impaired or physically challenged. The blackboards or whiteboards are fixed at a proper height in the class to be accessible to all children, including those who want to come near the board and read it. These blackboards and whiteboards should not be too high for students in wheelchairs to access. The classrooms have adequate daylight and extra light when necessary. This is especially essential for students who are mild and moderately visually impaired. The noise level in the classes is minimized to avoid distractions. Students with autism spectrum disorder and attention deficit hyperactive disorder required a quiet and peaceful place to study. Even the slight noise or distractions affect their learning. The inclusive school takes measures to provide adequate transport facilities to get easy access to the school. Hence, school buses or vans are provided by the school or the school may recommend private transport arrangements for the students. These are the infrastructure and facilities provided by inclusive schools to remove physical barriers for students wanting full participation in an inclusive school. Now, we will learn about the infrastructure of inclusive schools for removing cognitive barriers. Assistive devices like hearing aids, magnifying glasses, talking books, computers, talking calculators, internet connectivity, etc. are accessible to students as per the funds available to the school. The school library includes resources adapted for the differently abled students or students with disabilities. For example, books in braille, e-books, audio books, interactive CDs, etc. The school has a resource room or special room for additional teaching if required. Audiovisual rooms or rooms for remedial teaching may be needed to cater to the needs of students with disabilities. Rooms may be required if the student requires speech therapy or physiotherapy during the school hours. The school is equipped with science labs and equipment for mathematical activities, including the adapted versions. Subject laboratories may require adjustments as per the needs of the students with disabilities. The school has adequate sports facilities for all children, irrespective of their abilities. 
There are eight goals that schools need to address in order to provide inclusive education for all types of learners. These goals are related to the infrastructure required in an inclusive school. The eight goals are goal one, body fit, two, comfort, three, awareness, four, understanding, five, wellness, six, social integration, seven, personalization, and the eighth goal, cultural appropriateness. So let's try and understand these goals with the help of few examples of school infrastructures. These examples are connected to the respective goals. Body fit is the first goal. It is related to accommodating a wide range of body sizes and abilities of students. For example, pathways, hallways and doors are wide enough to accommodate wheelchairs and other types of assistive devices. School desks and tables are appropriately sized for each of the children using them and also for children who are using wheelchairs as shown in the picture. The second goal is comfort. It is expecting students to function as per their limits. For example, the doors are not too heavy to open and they have a simple design where the doors have handles such as levers instead of doorknobs. This enables children with limited hand movements to open the door. Goal three is awareness that is concerned with ensuring that critical information is easily perceived using different senses. For example, signs or signboards in the school have large font size and are colorful. This is useful for students with partial vision. Goal four is understanding, that is helping students to understand clearly. For example, in the same picture, the signs have pictograms wherever there is possible. For example, here there is a picture of a book and a pencil to denote classrooms. An office cabinet is used to indicate administration. These pictograms are useful for students with dyslexia who find it difficult to read labels in words. Goal five is wellness, which deals with contributing and promoting health by avoidance of dis diseases and prevention of injuries. For example, gender appropriate toilets are available, Handrails are provided on both sides of the toilet and also in staircases and ramps. This is required by the physically challenged students and the visually impaired students. Goal six is social inclusion or integration, which includes treating all groups with dignity and respect. For example, admission accommodates all children, including children with disabilities. The same learning resources are also used for all children and are encouraged to interact and learn together. Goal seven is personalization, which consists of providing opportunities for choice and expression of individual preferences. For example, toilets provide each gender with appropriate level of privacy and safety. Where staircases are used, ramps also are available in the same locations. The last goal, which is goal eight, is cultural appropriateness. That is respecting and reinforcing cultural values. For example, learning resources include culturally appropriate information and examples. The school's design should also reflect the cultural norms. So the classroom also reflects the cultural background of the students. For example, from this picture, one can see easily and identify the cultural background of these students. This makes the students feel comfortable and accepted in the schools. So if schools are able to satisfy all these eight goals, then they can provide all the infrastructural facilities required for different types of learners. 
the infrastructure of an inclusive school may seem to some as being very expensive. However, if these physical infrastructural modifications are made at the time of constructing the school building, it's really not that expensive. Giving access to differently abled students in schools in the long run actually helps the society to gain economically. This is because irrespective of differences in their abilities, all students can be educated and trained to become contributing members of the society. It's very rightly said that children who learn together, learn to live together. So the infrastructural facilities of inclusive schools play a vital role in providing good quality education for all under the same roof. These are the references from which the content of this video has been taken. This second website will give you more examples of the eight goals mentioned in the video. You can find the links given in the description box of the video. Just click on the links and you can read for additional information. So this was all about infrastructural facilities required for an inclusive school. Hope you liked the video and have realized that diverse learners can be made very comfortable under the same roof in schools with a few modifications. Thank you so much for watching the video.